I'm live. Hello everyone, and on behalf of the Heart of America Shakespeare Festival, founded by Marilyn Ross Strauss, I'm Sydney Garrett. Hello. Marilyn! Thank you all for being here today with us um, to celebrate Marilyn. Um, I like to think of her in the most joyful of terms because we laughed a lot together. Um, I'm going to get through this, Gail. I'm, I'm through this. I'm going to be good. I'm going to do it how she'd like me to. Um, during this process of Marilyn's passing, the amount and uh, quality of the responses from people that her festival have touched has surprised even me. I knew it was going to be a lot. I did not know how deep and meaningful it would be. I did not know how many people would say to me, our children gained so much from the Heart of America Shakespeare Festival. Thank you, Marilyn Strauss. Uh, it moved our families, it changed some lives, and the people who worked with the festival have been oh so effusive in their love of uh, what Marilyn created. They love the opportunity to go into a city park every summer and provide free, high quality, professional Shakespeare plays for our entire community. And it is a magical and amazing experience when you are there and having that sense of community. And we have Marilyn to thank for that. Uh, Gail said everything good this morning. I'm just gonna repeat some stuff probably, but I looked up the word chutzpah. I, wasn't, I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it was. So in the dictionary, it says it's the quality of audacity for good or for bad. And I love that because, you know, we're all good sometimes and sometimes we're a little bad. And uh, Marilyn was not exempt. Um, she was audacious and she had the willingness to take bold risks all of her life. These words are the words I think of when I think of her. I think of her as bold, daring, fearless, intrepid, brave, and courageous. And she had pluck and grit. And when I like somebody, especially women, weirdly enough, I say, she's got sand. Mm. And Marilyn had sand, you know, which is weighty. And when it gets wet, it's hard to move. And <laughs> uh, it sometimes rubs you the wrong way. But uh, it's a really, I think it's a really amazing quality. And Marilyn had sand. Uh, she was a go-getter. She was a woman about town. Until, I mean, until when she was 90, she went out more than I do. Did, do. I, I, I'd be like, where are you going tonight, Marilyn? She'd be like, oh, come on out. Let's go do something. She was always like, let's do something. She wanted to be doing something all the time. She was a Broadway producer who won a Tony Award, the only one I personally know. But before all of that, before she was the go-getter and the Tony Award winner and the creator, she was also a teenage girl who was sometimes left on her own to fend for herself. That gets me when she told me that story. Uh, she was a young wife. She was at times a single mom. She was a bit of a femme fatale, always, femme fatale. She was a looker, right? Always. She was a really fun girlfriend when she was, you know, when, she, when you were just hanging out and having talk. We had a great time together. She was an inspiration and a muse, a creative thinker, always. She always had ideas. Always, always. Sometimes you did not want to hear any more of them, but boy, she had them. <laughs> and she had so many of them, sometimes we just can't do all that today. Um, she was a theater creator and a founder who always said she was in the begging and whining business. And she was and I am now. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> Marilyn left me to be in the begging and whining business. Um, she was also my art mom, and for that I will be eternally grateful. She was up for having fun. We loved ice cream, and we loved going out to dinner, so we would try to do that as often as we could. She loved the theater, and she loved movies, and all the arts, and she loved stories, which is why she did what she did. Just a simple love of stories, which I have, and I'm looking out in this house, and I'm seeing people who work with me in the theater. We love stories. That's why we do what we do. We want to share a story. and. Fortunately, at this festival, we get to share the stories of the best playwright of all time. So, thanks for that, Mayor. Um, she told me, oh, this is good. She told me when I became the artistic director of this company, she'd always tell me what she thought. So I was like, okay. But she said, I will listen to and I will change my mind. She was very firm about that, and she did. So, we didn't always agree, and she had her own very strong opinions, but if I had a good reason, or a good, um, shall I say, argument, I guess. Um, 
she listened and um, she changed her mind. And I believe that, and I love that about her. She gave me the greatest gift of all that anyone could ever ask for, continual support, constant, always present support. I knew that she would support me even if we didn't agree, and um, she always, always was there. I could call her anytime. She would give me unsolicited or solicited advice at, at any moment. <laughs> that kind of support gives you what you need to succeed, and if there's been any success since her, but since she started this and since I took over this position, it's because of that, because she supported me, and she created a board of directors who does the same thing, and I'm extremely grateful. I will miss having her here in person. I will always hear her in my mind, always, disagreeing sometimes. <laughs> and cheering me on when I know that it's something that we've done that she would have loved. And sometimes I'm just gonna hear phrases she used and the simple words that she would say. She did give me great advice for growing old. She said, don't find a boyfriend and just become a nurse or a purse. <laughs> So any of you single uh, gals out there, and you guys too, just remember that. It's very safe advice direct from Marilyn Strauss. <laughs> so as Gail said, yes, to quote her favorite Shakespeare, her favorite Shakespeare play was A Midsummer Night's Dream. Gail used it today, and though she be but little, she is fierce. She was a remarkable, petite force of nature, and I loved making her laugh and I wish she were here today, because when you really got her to laugh, that was the best thing in the world. She didn't laugh big all the time, like some of us do, I do sometimes, but when she would do it, it was magical. I will miss her light, and along with our board and our amazing staff, I will continue to work hard to make sure that we continue her legacy and provide free, high-quality, professional Shakespeare spear outdoors in a park in our beautiful home in Southmoreland Park. Um, from now on as long as I can be here to make that happen. So I would like to raise a glass to Marilyn, even though I don't have one. I'm gonna just say the words, but you all toast her if you will. This is my toast to Marilyn. I, I toast her spirit and her light and her amazing chutzpah. And I hope that Marilyn and Will Shakespeare will meet up and have a glorious conversation in a glass of wine. <laughs> We wanted to bring a little Shakespeare to you today. It's not going to be a long play, so don't get too worried, some of you. Um, I want to bring up, um, because it's Midsummer Night's Dream is her favorite play, let's visit the Fairy Kingdom with Oberon and Titania with our friends who most recently played those roles on the festival stage. Our own Jan Rogie as Titania and John Renson House as Oberon. Thank you. All right. get off now. Leaving the stage. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, go. <laughs> Just so you know, I changed my shoes for Marilyn. <laughs> 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 thank you, thank you. Ah. <laughs> Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon? Fairy Skippens? I have forsworn his bed in company. Carry, rash wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India? For that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your busted mistress and your warrior love, the Theseus must be wedded. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity? How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on hill or dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beaches, margins of the sea, to dance our ringlets with the whistling wind, but with thy brawls, thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, Piping to us in vain as in revenge, and sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling from the land of every pelting river made so proud, they have overborne their continents. The ox had therefore stretched his yoke in vain. The plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with 
you, more Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And thorough this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. The childing autumn, the angry winter, change their wanted liveries. And the mazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And the same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Oh, set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, but she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away! We will tide down the right of my longer stay. Go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove, till I torment thee for this injury. And that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, not just yet. You're still at Shakespeare. You musical theater people, man. <laughs> Try to do serious theater up here, Jeremy. Um, Marilyn's favorite speech from A Midsummer Night's Dream was a bottom's dream speech. Those of you in the theater know that speech. Here's our Art of America Shakespeare Festival Director of Education and the actor who brilliantly portrayed Bottom in our most recent production of the play. Matt Rapport, share that speech with us, please. No pressure. All right. Brilliantly. <laughs> Brilliantly share Marilyn's favorite speech. No problem. <clears throat> when my cue comes, call me, and I will answer. My next is most fair, Pyramus. Hey, ho. Peter Quinn's? Flute, the bellows mender. Snout, the tinker. Starveling, God's my life. Stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream, past the wit of man, to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. <laughs> Methought I was, there is no man can tell what. Methought I was and methought I had uh, the eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream, and it shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and I will sing it at the latter end of a play before the Duke. For adventure, to make it the more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh. shadows have offended. Think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, 
And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And, as I am an honest puck, if we have honored luck, <coughs> now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Yes. Okay, Jeremy. Uh, no. Almost. <laughs> I realize that Marilyn was a Broadway producer, and you know, Broadway's got a bunch of musicals they do. Can you imagine? There's musicals people want to go see. They don't just want to see Shakespeare. So, because of that, it seems fitting that we celebrate Marilyn's life by bringing some musical theater into this room. And you're involved. So, look on your tables, find your songbooks, because there are a couple of a uh, couple, three numbers that have been adapted a little bit to fit our particular oh. honoree today. So you're going to be singing along with Jeremy, but we have some hostesses who are going to help us who sing better than I do. <laughs> we'll the, see. The amazing Deborah Bluford, Deb Bluford, and Cheryl Weaver. <laughs>
know you wanted someone to share this today. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Is that okay? I would love that. Gotta get rid of my gum. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> Uh, this is Marilyn's favorite sonnet, sonnet 29. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble death heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I must most enjoy, contented least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising, haply I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love, remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Rest you well, Marilyn. There's plenty more food to have, but before we do that, if anyone would like to share, we want to present this microphone and allow you to step up and share any stories that you have, a remembrance, a word, or a, anything you want to share about Marilyn, feel free to step forward. Now's your moment. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. I'm gonna put it right down here where anyone can get at it. If you wanna speak from your seat, you may, or if you wanna come down forward, you're welcome to. Anyone? There's one. Come forward, Jim, please. How do you get up there? Climb yeah. over this way over here. I'll, I'll sell some jokes while you're heading this way. <laughs> <laughs> so, look at my crowds and over there. Um, <laughs> This is Jim Birdsell. Jim, you were in, uh, you played, did you play, did you play? Prospero. Prospero, first year. First year Tempest Prospero, Woo! Jim Birdsell. Woo! I wrote a few things down here. Is this on? I just used the earphones. 26 years ago, I was an active member of the acting community here, mainly at the Missouri Rep. And there was an announcement that there was a, uh, a new venture being started in the city called Shakespeare in the Park. Now at the time I was very busy with my voiceover career. And it took a lot of time and energy for me to do a show and I, I decided not to audition. Well, shortly after that, I received a call from Marilyn, who well, I didn't know very well. I chatted with her after shows and that. And that was about it. And, uh, and amazingly, she just said to me, where were you? <laughs> I expected you to be at the audition, Jim. Now, could you get over here right away because the director is leaving town? And I said, well, I guess so. <laughs> I guess I can. I'll, I'll be there. Well, I showed up, auditioned, was cast as Prosper. And then after that, I shared the time with Marilyn every time she called to, to go out to different groups and visit and talk about this new venture to raise money and awareness. I was a small player in that group but she was the leading actress. And she made it all happen. Bless her heart. I have one last thing to read here. I'm amazingly nervous today. Not usually, but I guess it's for Marilyn. This is the last line from a wonderful speech from The Tempest. We are such struggle. I'm sorry. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. God bless Marilyn Strauss.
That was beautiful. It's a beautiful conclusion to this portion of our day. Please enjoy more food, talk amongst yourselves, and remember Marilyn. Share your stories. Thank you all so much. <laughs>